So we literally use our truck as a wind force field. create the biggest air dam that I could with my 80 series. That's why I love land cruisers. <laughs> They're so dope. I don't think y'all understand how proud I am. This is why you get a good tent. <laughs> this is why you get a good tent so it can sustain sustain this land. But if you don't get a good tent, then shit's gonna blow over. I, none of me is on camera. None of me is on camera. <laughs> if you don't get a good tent, your shit's gonna blow over and it's gonna leak. So get you a good tent. And even if you do have a good tent, it doesn't matter because you're not going to sleep through the night because this is going to be going on. I wish I could see just how crazy this thing looks. Like this whole side is just collapsed. It's like right on top of us. But Sonya said it's golden. As long as it stays down, that's all we can do. All your tent. So Teresa has a new self-made sand dune from this is all the sand it blew in since we went to bed last night. And we had to get out at like two this morning to restake both tents. Try to explain to y'all essentially what we experienced last night. As far as 25 mile per hour winds um, and what it did to the tent and what was so intense about it. So I'm going to start with what was in front of us and then sort of by, bring you back and forth. I don't know how this is going to play out, so we'll see. So the area where the sand is nice and smooth, that's high wind but it's also like a very fine dust, um, sand dust. And what down, what's down there that appears to be like little peaks are just more massive chunks of whatever. So um, as you can sort of see when you look out, it's almost like a little desert landscape. And those are the tracks and the depth of sand that um, is in any particular place. 
guys so right here this is the shield the smooth area right here is the shield that I created using the tarp pressed up against the side of the truck up under it and then using the winds um, pressure to keep it up against the doors and just hold it up there and I put a little bit of sand in it to help create a essentially a wind barrier so what you're looking at is essentially we made Frank a windshield so that our tent could survive how much wind was coming um, from the uh, shore. And we had, and again, this was at 25 miles per hour. So I just want you to sort of see what's taking place and how you might have to use your vehicle as literally a shield. And right up by the tent, this is us experiencing the least amount of air. And you can tell by how smooth and fine and gentle the sand was. But yet it was still collapsing the whole side of the tent at like maximum protection from Frank, we were still getting our butt whipped. And then just a little bit of um, debris that's on the backside of the tent. The stakes maintained where they were. Guy lines did their job. And back all, oh, I wish I hadn't like put the truck there, but you could literally see how we took on a sandstorm last night and how we were able to use the side of the truck, Frank, the tank, to be a force field to protect us, yes. And then I'm gonna also show you that Teresa did the same. So right in front of her, her tent is like nice and smooth, but you can see through the deeper um, pieces, the unsmoothness right here, that she was getting bigger chunks of sand and the wind was swooping around off the backside of our side and hitting her tent directly. So technically she should have been right here, but look at how much sand she was getting from the front. All of this was just erosion. She used the side of her truck as a shield as well. Look at the sand build up on the back side of her tent, on the back side of her truck and her tent was like completely collapsed. And then you see like this smoothness off the backside and her um, going up there. All of this was just pure sand dust last night. We literally took on a sandstorm on Portsmouth Island. Boom. These waves. No, it would, it would cause a change in the pressure of the air and it would feel like the blanket moved, but nothing like nothing touched you. But it was just pressure. It was weird. We can go if you look. You see that dirt ring looking thing? Uh -huh. Those are the ends of the air bubble that Frank had created. Now, come over and you can start to see how Teresa's is fighting off the sand is coming in from all of this direction. But it looked like uh, Frank was throwing dirt up on Teresa. Oh, no doubt. But our bubble was out to here. And then Teresa. Because like you said, you had wind coming from all directions. Yeah. You know, yeah. look at, yeah. Yeah. Look at my truck. Like, how I get under my truck? My truck back wheel wasn't that high. No. no. Here, let me but see, let me see if I can get out. But you were taking, like, you can see where she was taking sand from, where it was coming from, um, off of just this side of her truck.
So, I think according to just some basic physics right here, um, I think that this was because she didn't have a complete shield. She just used her truck, but she didn't take advantage of wind dynamics. So, that's what you get. Now, her tent did very well, so, but she was taking a lot of wind and sand inside of her tent. So, let me show you what that looks like. And you can sort of see just from the erosion, I wish we hadn't been walking in it. Um, and the wind eddies of where her wind was coming mostly from. And this is where most of her shield was. So, she should have moved her truck further forward. Yeah. 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 This is essentially where the wind was coming off of her truck and blocking sand, but I mean, she was taking sand from so many directions. She took a best guess at it. Uh, I wasn't mad at the angle that she chose. And we had to essentially adjust the trucks at night uh, to account for change in whatever wind direction. So her truck should have part, pretty much been parallel with ours and with a windshield. And she probably would have took less of this experience. So her shield missed a little bit. We didn't know that these kind of things could happen. But happy to have experienced it. It was a big learning lesson. But we literally use our truck as a wind force field. biggest air dam that I could with my 80 series. That's why I love man cruises. <laughs> They're so dope. I don't think y'all understand how proud I am. So I'm gonna show y'all what the aerial view of what took place with the pressure wave that we experienced and the debris that it was collecting. So over here in this like dicey area right in there, that's all she seashells with a good layer of sand. And it was essentially picking up that as its debris field and coming around this corner shearing right here in front right here where I'm at um, skipping down into the next little valley here where you see the dark spots and then directly into both of our tent areas so yeah there you go Frank was Park right there, creating a wind field, and that was blocking uh, essentially all of the force of the wind, proportionately. Uh, but it was creating pressure waves that we were feeling inside of the tent as it was doing its job of creating a wind field to protect us from the debris.